Listen, as two-time winners of the August Stanley Cup, I'm listening. The Ottawa Senators mm. uh, are, okay, I think they're right to be excited this year. I think fans are right to be excited this year. Are they not? See, a little bit excited? I think they're going to take a step forward because of how muted their fans have been this August. I, th I agree. I would say the August Stanley Cup went to the Montreal Canadiens, but not because they thought they were going to win the Cup, <laughs> but because they got line A, and I was thrilled yeah. for them. The, yeah. They're a smart online team. Yeah. And I think they have caught on to the meme. The Sens fans? Yes. Yeah. They have finally well, caught on to the August Stanley Cup, and, and they're going to... They won't allow themselves to get in the way of their team's success. That's fair. Anymore. Well, I don't think that they did. I think that ownership did. <laughs> I think bad general managers, managers did. But look at Ottawa is riding a high. They got a great starting goaltender. They got a great character winger in David Perron. Mm -hmm. They got a freaking arena plan. Mm -hmm. They got a... It's just there's so much going on here. And a new head coach who makes you vomit on the first day of training camp. And they're not starting the season with, uh, oh, Shane Pinto is just going to miss half the season. Mm -hmm. right? right? Like that is... Wham! Right Remember, smack dab in the middle of training. He was also in the middle of a contract dispute. And that. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Or you're coming off like, hey, you're getting fined a first round pick. That's you right. Know? Like none of that distraction senators are of the past. They're not a noisy team anymore. And I really like that about them. Now, there is like just a straight up truth about them, though. Like, so they, they made some good ads, like Adam said, Perron. Allmark is huge because they couldn't stop a beach ball last year. Other than that, they have not made very many moves which is why all their young guys, all of them, have to take a step this year if they hope to make the playoffs. Right. Every single one of them. Every guy 25 and under. I, I There's certainly a sneaky case that the Ottawa Senators are going to be a big active trade team, but it's going to be hmm. one of those things that they are going to have to perform on the ice first as the team currently is. Prove your worth. In order for those trades to happen. Mm -hmm. So... Let's talk about just let's just talk about how the franchise changes with Lena Zolmark starting games for you. Uh, you don't have to worry about the puck ending up in the back of your net every bloody time. Uh, Jacques Martin is is having to uh, uh, be like, no, these guys are good goalies, followed by them not being good goalies at all. Yeah, like when your coach says something like that, it is usually followed by some kind of bump, and it just wasn't. Um, but like Corpusalo, I don't think is a terrible goalie. Was the contract smart? No, I don't think he's that bad. Um, he's obviously not there anymore. Um, uh, Anton Forsberg, mm -hmm. I don't think is a bad goalie. Mm -hmm. Anton Forsberg has been really good at times in his career. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like I, that was so strange. Allmark, like when was his last actual bad season? Ages ago. Oh yeah. No, Allmark's great. He's one of top 10 goaltenders in the National Hockey League. So between pure lucky bounce back and we have a really good goalie now, surely the Sens like save percentage collectively goes up by an amount where you're already making up five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 points in the standings, mm -hmm. right? Like they, it should be a, a slam dunk improvement to go from one of the worst tandems in the league to, at very least, adequate. Yeah, I truly think having Linus Allmark on this team is a game changer for them, like wholesale. Like they, they, they're catapulted into a new part of the division now that they can say, like, hey, we have a solid goaltender that we can trust, plus a pretty, really good backup who's been a starter here uh, briefly before and displayed good goaltending talent. That's something that Buffalo can't say. Uh, Montreal can't say that. Detroit especially can't say that. They have 82 goaltenders signed at their roster. You know who can't say it? Boston. Bo well, as of right now, with Swayman not signed, they can't say that either. The same day that we're recording this, uh, uh, the Bruins have Cam Neely. the Sens tandem right. from last year, uh, except swap out Forsberg for... Brandon Busey, who I don't know if he's even played in the NHL. you got Corpus Allo Busey. So if you look at the Sens right now, I say they have one of the best goaltender situations in the division. So there's really high hopes for this team. There's definitely the potential. There. They've also done a good job of not going after players that don't want to be there. And <laughs> and I, I'm, Third I'm time's the charm. Naming, uh, I mean, you had Debrincat a couple of years ago. Yeah. Last year, you had Chikrin Tarasenko. Uh -huh. Go, those guys are gone. I look at this roster, and it's a group of guys that want to be Ottawa Senators. And to be fair to the players that didn't want to be in Ottawa, the Eugene Melnick years 
repelled a lot of people from wanting to be yeah, there. They were not good. And so now you've got a whole different thing. And here's the here's here's what I love too. You got Brady Kachuk is twenty going to be twenty four. This is his twenty four year season. Uh, Tim Stutza is a twenty two year. Drake Batherson will be twenty six. These three players are going to be the players that you expect to step up, mm -hmm. and they have been stepping up. But I think this is the year that they get to the next level of okay, we're here and this is going to be great. Well, as long as we're talking about the next level, Adam, I got to I gotta offer you condolences. Why? Oh, I think Jake Sanderson's going to make your mentions tough. Why? I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I liked the time. deal. I, I liked the deal. Oh, yeah, I, did you? Yeah. Uh, they have... I was the one that liked the deal. Uh, and they still called me a troglodyte. Uh, they have a legitimate case to say that they have seven guys on their team who could all be very, very good NHL players on, like, borderline stars. Yeah. If you look at the defense, it's Shabbat and Sanderson. Like, yeah. both of those guys on the left side could be studs. And we could look at them like how we looked at the Lightning. Shabbat's where, looking at a bounce back, too. Yeah, Shabbat's... Shabbat's I, Feel it's there though, you yeah, know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so we we could look at them like how we looked at the Lightning and the left side of this team. The right side's a little lacking, but then you go to the four group and you say Kachuk, Stutzla, Norris, Pinto, Batherson. Five guys who could all legitimately be NHL stars. Asterisk on Norris. I mean, at what point do at what point do you just carve into rock injury prone? Like, yeah, I think with with every young player, it's you're not that until you are that. You know, and with Norris, I'm still like uh, there with, hey, he could be very good. And I'm not. Oh, no, he got that a real good player. Yeah. And he's there. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And and to be to be fair, currently he's on the IR. Mm -hmm. And so that is. Again. And, and it's Again. tough. That's tough. So I want to say something, Jesse. You mentioned the left side on the on their defense. Sanderson Shabbat. Uh, great. Mm -hmm. uh, Artem Zub was was pretty solid for them last year. One guy that they picked up for, in the Chikrin trade that I actually really like is Nick Jensen. I think solid, steady, and when you have a team that, like, guys, like, no offense to, like, I feel like I'm picking on him, but, like, you know, you had a guy that the coach didn't like in Brandstrom. You had, you know, Travis Hamannick signed to that weird head-scratching deal. Yeah. You know, Nick Jensen is a real upgrade on what they had before. There's yeah. no argument that the Sens have gone backward at any position. No, that's, you're right. That's a good no, position no. to be in. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Like, even coach. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Then owner. Yeah. Everything. Like, yeah, that's crazy, actually. Yeah. There's no argument that the Sens have gone backward. Yeah. So. Adding, like, you look at the, okay, we named a bunch of young guys. You named Nick Jensen, bringing him in. That it also includes Perron and Cousins, you know? Yeah. And then Giroux's coming back for another season. He was great last year. So you have the old vets and the NHL regulars to surround the young talent, too. It's not just young guys who need to overperform. And I, like, they're, like, really one good stud right handed defenseman away from having a totally solid. Roster. If you look at it, that's kind of what they're missing. You know, high end right side of the D, but the depth is there with the additions of, of Perron and Cousins. And like, I don't hate their bottom lines at all. I want to say all we have to go off of one one sec is, yeah. is Brady Kachuk's play this preseason Ooh. is like a guy who watched his brother go to back to back cup finals and win the second one. Oh boy. I like, want one. He looks <laughs> like he's trying to win the Stanley Cup now. Like, and I'm not saying that as a chirp. Like, he, he, if this is his benchmark for the rest of the season, yeah, everyone's in trouble. I, uh, I want to, I want to say that I, as a Leaf fan, I hate that they have Nick Cousins. Hate it. Hate it. Um, hate it uh, and I also want to ask you guys, what are the expectations for the two thirds Leaf uh, fourth line with it's Michael Amadio? Three out of three when they get David Comp. That's right. That's right? right. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Noah Gregor, Gregor. Comp Amadio. <laughs> Noah Gregor and Michael Amadio. What do we think? What are the expectations, guys? Um, that line might score 20 goals all season, and 15 <laughs> of them will be on the lead. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. So looking at it, I think everything's improved. Are they there yet, though? That's the question. Now, last year, and this is really kind of important, um, they did have a big step up. Mm -hmm. A lot of people had them making the playoffs last year. I felt like, well, they had 60-something points the previous year. They improved it by about 10. They had 78 last year. The odds makers now are hot. They're red hot. Okay. On the Ottawa Senators. 90.5 points. That is a 12-and-a-half-point swing. Oof. That's really hard to do. Can this team 
do it. And by the way, whether you pick over or you pick under on BetMGM, the number is the same. It's a 1.87 bet. I'm going over. Okay. I go over on that, and I know 12 is a lot, and I'm going over that. Um, there's points to be had in this division, and they're going to grab a lot of them. And where do you have them finishing? Uh, they're going to be playing meaningful games into late March, early April, fifth in the division. Um, that puts you right in wild card territory. Jesse Blake. I got them fifth and over. They're going to be battling the Islanders for that second wild card spot, I think, to the very end. I agree. So, yeah. The oh. the Ridley Grigg Nick Cousins line oh, plus well. David Perron. That's going to be a fucking. Jeez. Like, <laughs> just put, how do you deal with that? Run, run Brady Kachuk out <laughs> that's there. That's an on insane point. trio. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, like, that's It's going to be deadly. Uh, the Sens are going to have a really fun season battling for that second wild card spot. I, uh, I agree, Jesse and Steve. I think they're an over. I think this is a 95 to a 98 point team. Uh, and you have to be to make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference right now. 90's too low. Um, it's too low. And, and I think that they are an outside shot at the playoffs. For sure, a wild card team. Fifth place, all three of us. Ottawa Senators, that is your Ottawa Senators season preview.